We're continuing our discussion of the materials used in reinforced concrete. Uh, we'll talk about the time-dependent properties of concrete, then we'll move on to steel. Um, okay, so here we go. Um, let's see. Screen. Okay. So uh, as a um, review, uh, what we did last time, we talked about the strength of concrete. We talked about F prime C ravage and F prime C. We went over the stress strain curves. Uh, you're supposed to remember that the strain at failure, this will be important later, is 0 0.003 for our applications. Uh, the modulus of elasticity is given by 57,000 root F prime C, again, uh, square root. And the uh, modulus of rupture in a beam, the tensile strength, 7.5 square root F prime C, PSI. And the split cylinder strength, uh, 6.7 square root F prime C. Okay, uh, so for this little part of the lecture, or this little lecture on materials, um, we're going to talk about long-term loading. Okay, and uh, what that involves is creep, shrinkage, and uh, change due to temperature. And we'll talk about reinforcement, uh, the type of steel that goes into reinforced concrete. And uh, to get you ready for uh, 4265, I believe, or 85, I can't remember, but the pre-stressed concrete class, we'll talk about pre-stressing steel a little bit. Okay, uh, <clears throat> so this is kind of interesting. The apparent strength of concrete goes up, or the strength of concrete goes up, depending on how long you take to load it. And so, you know, our test in the lab was about uh, four minutes, minute to four minute, and uh, this is the strength you would get. Okay, so if you took uh, one hour to load it, uh, It'll be that much. That's what we're dividing everything by the hour loading, uh, one day. And uh, if you take 100 days to load, uh, that, that it looks something like that. So I had a couple of uh, research experiences where um, I actually had a guy from uh, the military. He was at the Waterways Experiment Station, uh, Cora Engineers. And he wanted to know the strength of concrete when you loaded it in milliseconds. And so obviously, it has something to do with blowing up concrete. Uh, uh, we never finished that experiment, very unfortunately, uh, while he was a student, uh, passed away of a heart attack. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, another experience I had with this was we were entering a concrete cube strength competition. So every university brought their cubes and we're testing them. And there were so many cubes to test. I forgot where we were, I think UCLA. Um, what they did was they increased the loading rate as fast as they could so they could break all the specimens. And so everybody knew how strong their concrete was going to be because, you know, like we made 20 cubes and tested a bunch of them before we came. So we knew what we were gonna get. Uh, and so we go to break our cube and like, oh, it was a lot higher than we thought. And we're uh, standing around to wait to see what the other schools got. <clears throat> and we were in contention and everybody was within like five to 10 PSI of each other. And then some schools started complaining saying, oh, we know we're a lot stronger than that. And then every school got basically the exact same strength. And what had happened was they were loading it so fast, I think the, the uh, load meter didn't have time to react. And so it, it just read the same strength, plus or minus five PSI for every cube. So it was like a 30-way tie. I don't know what they did in the end. I left after, after it was clear that they had messed it up. Well, we just left. So... Um, that's just to say that how fast you load something, a concrete affects how strong it is. Okay, but this is what I want to talk about, it's creep. And so when you load a concrete cylinder up, it, it, it'll uh, um, deform a certain amount, okay? 
Okay, so there we go. And if you leave the load on there over time, it increases to strain, the strain increases, it continues the strain. And uh, so for example, if you, if you were to put a car uh, up on concrete blocks like, or concrete cylinders, over time, this will continue to get shorter okay? as, as you just left it out there for years. And so this axis here is in days. So that's about one year. We're looking at two years, etc. Okay, so uh, you load it up in a minute. It, it deflects that much. And the deflection continues to grow over time and it, and it gets asymptotic. But see how this is still going up? Uh, it goes for like five to 10 years. So let's say at some point in the future, you take the load off. Um, it does not come back to zero. It instantly comes back. Okay, oh, let me make that better. It instantly comes back an amount similar to this, but a little less. But what happens is the creed doesn't completely recover. Okay. And in fact, when you take the load off, you'll have a permanent deformation. Um, let's see, load it back up again. It comes back up and it continues to creep some more, but never up to uh, the original. Okay, so this is kind of an important thing for deflections. Uh, your deflections will increase over time. How much? Well, here's a creep coefficient. And what this is, is uh, um, times the elastic deformation. Okay, so if you have 4,000 psi concrete, uh, you get an extra three times the deflection over time. So that means if it deflected one inch, your beam deflects one inch, uh, I don't know, 20 years later, it'll deflect another three inches for a total of four inches. Okay, and as you increase the strength of the concrete, uh, the creep decreases, but that's huge. Uh, the deflection will be four times what you think. Okay, shrinkage. Uh, this is uh, how much it shrinks over time. And obviously, the more water you put, the more it can shrink, right? Because more water can come out. Okay, and this is uh, the strain in 001, uh, depending on how much water you put in. Okay, um, and then the shrinkage ratio uh, depends on how much aggregate you have in there uh, because. Um, uh, rocks, the, the aggregate, the, the coarse aggregate doesn't shrink. Okay? It's just the cement paste that's shrinking. Okay? So uh, depending on, on how much percentage aggregate you have, whatever the shrinkage of the paste was here, you multiply that by this factor here. Uh, the key thing is the more water and less coarse aggregate you have in your concrete, the more it will shrink. Okay, temperature. Um, the, the change in length, you know, if you heat something, it gets longer. If you cool something, it gets shorter. Uh, it, it's, uh, the strain is uh, thermal coefficient alpha. Times the change in temperature. And then, uh, you multiply the strain by the length to get the total deflection. And so this is a key thing. It's in strain per degree Fahrenheit, and it's 6 times 10 to the minus 6. Um, 10 to the minus 6 is uh, 1 over a million, or a micro, right? Micro means uh, uh, 1 millionth. And so... Uh, we would call this alpha equals six micro strains per degree Fahrenheit. And that 0 0.003, um, that's 3,000 micro strains, right? Because that's six decimal places for a millionth. One, two, three, four. So 3,000 micro strains. Okay. So, 
the key thing is the thermal coefficient for concrete, six microstrain per degree Fahrenheit. Coincidentally, steel is six microstrain per degree Fahrenheit. So it's the perfect marriage in, in terms of temperature change. They'll change the same amount. 